Bentang mau apa? Tenok lah. Uh, itu nonton. Uh, I'm broadcasting from my office at the philosophy department. Tenok lah. Hey, monitor apa tu? Just a moment. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, all right. Uh, I have a monitor to my left just to make sure that uh, uh, I can check whether you can see the screens that uh, I'm posting. So, good morning. Like I've said, I'm at room 4209. Palma Hall, Pavilion 2, Philosophy Department, second floor. Hey, uh, first things first, uh, let's get on to our attendance check. Very important. All right. Ah, uh, on natatandaan ninyo, ha? Ano ang sabi natin? Importante ang attendance. Bakit? Kasi, isko lang tayo ng bayan. Alright, so everybody, check this out. Attendance, alright. Fill out the forms, and then uh, we go on with the class. Alright, so why is attendance important? Eh, kasi scholar ng bayan eh, yung resources ng bayan eh ginagastos atin, pati sa akin. At hindi natin dapat uh, babayaan sapagkat uh, sa dami ng mga Pilipino kailangan ng resources eh kawawa naman kung hindi natin na uh, bibigyan ng halaga. Alright? Dapat sana napunta sa kanila eh pero sa atin napunta. Oh! Ang galing ah! Ang dami na agad na nakapag-comment. Good morning! Alright, uh, maganda ang umaga sa inyong lahat. Okay, oh, so much so for the attendance ha, bahala na kayo dyan. Meanwhile, okay. Taste mo na kayo sa akin. Meanwhile, uh, let me tell you about one stream yard. We were supposed to invite 10 of you. We have been planning on inviting 10 of you into the live broadcast. Kaya lang, uh, I've come to think about our privacy policy. Question. Uh, all of us are comfort are all of us comfortable uh, being on YouTube live broadcast uh, for everybody from North Pole to South Pole to see hindi siguro some of you uh, may not be so comfortable with that and I cannot force you to, to join stream your live on YouTube so what we will do, it will be all voluntary. Uh, before next meeting, I will come up with a form and uh, I will uh, announce the, I will uh, post the form on our classroom. And uh, anybody who wants to join the live streaming, uh, you fill, up the, fill out the form. And then I invite you to the consequent uh, subsequent, sorry, to, I invite you to the subsequent uh, broadcast, all right? But for now, think about it. Do you really want to be with me? Ako, mahiyain ako sa totoo lang. Eh, wala akong choice eh. <laughs> Naloko na. Lalo na, kita nyo naman itong buko. <laughs> anyway, so, I'll expect some of you might want to to be part of the broadcast, why not? Baka matulungan nyo nga ako. Maganda yon. 
Oh, right? Maganda pa kayo siya rin. So, we'll see. Ipopost ko yung form and then you sign up if you want to be part of the broadcast. Now, about Facebook, uh, hindi pa rin ako comfortable. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, let me see. Okay, but anyway, uh, do you have a better audio by now? Right, hindi masyadong maayos yung audio kanina, but uh, pwede na siguro ito. Now, about Facebook, uh, we're having second thoughts about Facebook because I have yet to be satisfied with uh, the security arrangement. So we have not yet activated our Facebook group. Uh, standby. Hopefully, next meeting we can do that. But for now, we have YouTube. All right, we have YouTube live. Uh, Tis tayo. Now, uh, practice tayo. We need to practice how to use Mentimeter. Some of you are probably already using Mentimeter elsewhere, but uh, not all of you. Chances are not all of you. So uh, let's do it. Practice tayo. All right. So, ito yung ating uh, Mentimeter. All right. Teka, let's change the screen. Uh, okay. Sorry. Kamali. <laughs> ito ha. Popost natin ha, Mentimeter. Yan. Can you see that? Mentimeter. All right, here. Can you see that? Okay, that's the link. That's the link. And this is the... All right. That's the link. So... Ay, nakalimutan kong i-activate. Pasensya na. Okay. Now, everybody, you come up with your, uh, you log into your, your accounts as I log into mine. All right, and then I'll do the presentation. Uh, some of you might want to get the uh, code. I'll give you the code, all right? Okay, for today, uh, I've already posted on our, all right? For today, All right. For today, ang pag-uusapan natin, inilagay ko na dito, ha? Inilagay ko na kanina. Okay? Ano yung inilagay ko kanina? For today, we're supposed to talk about, all right, this. Introduction to Ancient Greek Origins. All right? Can you see that? Introduction to Ancient Greek Origins. Now, you remember we discussed we discussed the value of uh, the nature and limits of reasoning. All right, the nature and limits of reasoning. All right, this is our topic for today. But uh, meanwhile, in relation to that, we are going to. Use the Mentimeter, all right? 14 of you pa lang ang nakakalock in sa Mentimeter. Uh, Bilis-bilisan po, all right? Okay. Mentimeter, okay. Uh, let me see. Itong i-share natin sa inyo, ha? But, uh, oh, wait. Uh, 
But uh, nakalagay naman kayo, so kita nyo na yung sinasabi ko sa Mentimeter. Okay. So, let me do the presentation. Okay, introduction to ancient Greek origins. So remember, meron akong tinanong sa inyo last meeting. Alright? Natatandaan nyo ba? We discussed the ancient uh, Egyptians last meeting and uh, ano yung tanong ko? Ito yung tanong ko, sagutin nyo ngayon. Ancient civilizations think that lives of men are in the hands of the gods and the deities. Eh, ang tanong natin, yung mga Pilipino ba at large, ganun bang mag-isip? <laughs> Kapareho bang mag-isip ng mga ancient civilizations? Ang, ang, ang inyong choices, eh, nilimitahan ko, ha? But uh, later on, you will have uh, open... Uh, open questions. So, pero sa kanil mo na yun, practice lang tayo ngayon. Oo, 50% nanini, 40 na lang. Kanina, 50% naniniwala. Yes, most of them. <laughs> Question. Alam nyo ba, eh, sa tagal ko na nagtuturo, ha? isa sa dahilan, kaya ako eh, napi, natuloy ang magturo na nang tuloy-tuloy Dapat nga papunta ko Amerika kasama nung tatay, nanay ko, lahat ng mga kapatid ko. Pero kaya ako nandito pa sa Pilipinas, eh, gawa nitong pinag-uusapan natin na ito eh. Na-discovery ko ito dito sa UP. By the way, pasensya na, may clerical error ng konti yung aking isinulat, nagmamadali eh. Yung question mark, may period pa, no, nasobrahan. Sa so, tinagal-tagal ko ng pagtuturo, Hindi lumalayo sa 50%, mas malimit pa nga, more than 50% will say, Opo, most Filipinos at large think like the ancient civilizations. Oh, that their lives are in the hands of the gods and the deities. Kaya pag sila bumoboto, ang hinahalap nila yung mga sugo ng Diyos o yung mga malapit. sa mga sugo ng Diyos, kagaya ng, ng Son of God. <laughs> dyan sa Kumaw, pag bumabiyahe ako, nakikita ko dyan, ang laki-laking poster, I am the Son of God. <laughs> so, si Mario Josep, kung ako yun, sasabihin ko, eh, hindi naman ako Son of God, eh. hindi naman ako makapalang muka. Sasabihin ko na lang, pinsan ako ng Diyos. <laughs> pinsan buo. <laughs> Alright, let's see. 50%. Ang sabi, yes, and most of them. Uh, ang sabi naman ng iba, 33%. Yes, but only some of them, although significant. Oh. Eh pag pinagsama nyo yung 50 at saka 33%, eh di 83% na yon. <laughs> eh, yan lang nangyayari. Kaya ang sabi ko sa inyo, kailangan natin ng mga ambassadors. Baka pag natapos din itong course natin na ito, ay pwede naman kayo maging ambasador sa paligid natin. Ha? Ay kahit naman kayo mag-abroad at magpadala kayo ng sangkatutak na pera sa Pilipinas, yung pera na yan, walang mangyayari. Kukunin lang yan ng kurakot. Bakit? Eh hanggang ang mga Pilipino, ganyan mag-isip. Ay wala. Yung pera ipapadala ninyo galing Amerika papunta dito, ay malulustay lamang. Mas importante, kailangan natin ng mga leaders dito ng mga mag, magiging ambasador natin para sa maayos na pangangatwiran. Eh kung kayo ay nasa Amerika, padala ng padala ng pera dito, kagaya ng aking lahat ng mga kapatid, ang dami niyan, at saka ng aking tatay nanay, ay baliwala yung pera dito eh. Kukurakutin lang ng mga politiko. Ang kailangan natin, yung mga ambasador nandito sa Pilipinas at mahahawa ang mga Pilipino sa maayos na pangangatwiran. Kaya importante yung logic. Ha? O. Next! May tanong pang isa. How many of you have taken up some course in high school on the nature and limits of reasoning? High school, senior high. O, tinanong ko na yan eh, pero tingnan natin anong sagot ninyo diyan. Sige nga. O, eh, bakit ulang sumasagot? 
Hindi nyo ba nakikita? Yan, meron. Oh. Ang sagot, yes, but only in passing. Ay, ako'y ganyan. Eh, bilib na bilib ako sa Ateneo. Pumasok ako sa Ateneo. Ay, pagpasok ko eh, ngayong naalala ko, ay pumunta ako ng UP. Siyempre, naiha, naikokompare kong Ateneo at UP. Ah, ay, yung natutunan kong logic din eh, ay doon sa high school, ay nung pinag-aralan namin, eh, dalawang linggo. Ah, hindi pala, sorry. Dalawang araw sa isang linggo. One week, In all my life, elementary, hanggang matapos ng high school, ay one week lang akong nag-aral tungkol sa maayos na pangangatwiran. Yung one week na yun, dalawang araw pa. Isipin ninyo, one week out of 52 weeks, and how many years, 10 years ako nag-aral, isang linggo lamang ang pinag-aralan ko sa maayos na pangangatwiran. Talaga naman, ano? So, yes, but only in passing as a small part of discussion. This is another way of looking at, at uh, our answers in terms of the real numbers, not the percentage. So, 17, ang nagsabing yan nga, ay dadalwa lang naman ang nagsabi not at all. Well, eh, pag sinabi natin 52 out of, sorry, 1 out, out of 52 uh, weeks of the year, ay, di ba, ang labo naman on, tapos ay eh, 10 years pa. So, anyway, as you can see, yan yung sagot natin. Kaya kailangan tayo, ha? Kailangan lang mga ambasador. O, may isa pang tanong. Ito naman yung isang klase ng pagsagot. Ganyan naman. <coughs> Excuse me. Sensya na. How many of you have ever thought about Why many buildings at the campus, ating campus ha, dito sa UP, are ancient Greek inspired? Pwedeng, ay, never eh, hindi ko na iisip. Alright? Until nagklase tayo. Meron lamang magsasabi, ay, meron akong pakiramdam, pero yung pakiramdam ko, hindi ko alam, hindi ko sigurado. Diyan ako eh, personally, diyan ako sa some inkling but never really sure about it. Some inkling lang ako. Ah, ay may magaling eh. I've always known about it even before class. Ay siguro ikaw eh, anak ng teacher, anak ng profesor. <laughs> yung mga anak ng profesor, eh di kabisado nila at gawa na yung mga, mga tatay na na hindi lang kukwentuhan sila eh. All right, that's uh, another way of looking at our participation. And uh, as you can see, kagaya ko, marami sa inyo. Some inkling but never really sure about why. Meron naman, never talaga. Eh, wala tayo magagawa. Eh, hindi naman talaga kasama sa edukasyon natin yun. Eh. At meron namang isa, have always known. Eh, sabi ko nga, eh, baka yan, eh, baka kung sino man yan, eh, anak ng teacher. <laughs> All right? So, Uh, hopefully, lahat kayo ay nakakasama sa ating diskusyon sa Mentimeter. But uh, later on, ibibigay ko sa inyong uh, iba pang mga uh, usapan at uh, talungan. But uh, at least, nakapag-practice tayo. Ha? Okay. Now, uh, balik tayo dito sa ating uh, introduction to ancient Greek origins. All right? Yan nga ang topic natin. Alright? Kita nyo ba? Uh, ang comments natin, dito nyo uli ilalagay ha, sa public lectures. Comments dito po. Please. Alright? Comments dito po. Please. Yan. Okay? Now. Uh, punta ako dito. Kasi mas malinaw ito eh. Bakay sa PDF file ko. Right? Introduction to Ancient Greek Origins. Sabi nga natin, pag pumunta ka sa United States, halimbawa, yan. Ang United States Senate, o oh, ay maliwanag na maliwanag, ay itsurang ancient Greek structure. Di ba? Uh, photograph by Harold Mendo from uh, Wikimedia. Salamat sa kanya. O. Oh. Maliwanag yan, ha? Eh, hindi lang US Senate, pati yung US House of Representatives. 
Pati yung White House, kung saan nakatira si Donald Trump. Ganyan ang itsura. If you go to London, yung kanilang Parliament House, marami, lalo na yung interior, marami ay inspired ng ancient Greece. Ganon din sa, sa Berlin, yung kanilang uh, Bundestag, ganyan din ang itsura. Dito sa atin ay, uh, ayan, no? kita nyo. Uh, can you see that? Uh, De La Salle University, alright? the best school along Taft Avenue, Manila. Alright? Ay, ganyan din ang itsura nila. Inspired ng ancient Greeks. At syempre naman, tayo, the best school in the Philippines. Yan, photo by Ramon Velasquez. Salamat sa kanya. O, oh, ay malam, maliwanag na maliwanag. Ancient Greek structures. Yung mga buildings ng UP nung bago nagka-World War II na binomba noong away ng mga hapon at Amerikano, ay ganito, halos ganito ang itsura. Halos ganyan ang itsura. Alright? At saka ganito yung salasal. Kaya lang eh, medyo ito na modernize na eh. Kasi wala lang natira doon sa mga original na building na UP. Alright? So anong pag-uusapan natin ngayon? No? Siyempre, ito yung kanilang inspiration. Alright? Yan yung parte noon sa Athens. Ang ating pag-uusapan ito, ha? These are the points of our discussions today. One, the advent of philosophy. We want to point out that the advent of philosophy as a discipline is very much related to the advent of democracy as practiced by the ancient Greeks. Yan. Hindi pwedeng ang diskusyon ng philosophy hiwalay sa diskusyon ng democracy. For now, alam natin ang diskusyon ng philosophy ay uh, all around the notion of reasoning, pangangatwiran. Ang pag-uusap ng pangangatwiran ay hindi dapat gagawin na hiwalay sa pag-uusap ng demokrasya. Bakit? Ay iyan na nga ikukwento ko. Yung ikalawang punto, sinasabi natin, democracy as practiced by the ancient Greeks has come as much as a product of Unique confluence. Confluence ng maraming bagay. Historical, economic, geological events, as much as other factors pointed out by many scholars so far. Marami. Alright? Political, economic, geological events nagsama-sama. Papakita natin paano nagkaroon ng demokrasya sa mundo natin. Now, pangatlong punto, philosophy, ipopoint out natin, as a discipline, is a product itself of the highlighting, thanks to the practice of democracy, of human capacity to reason. In other words, lalabas na highlight ng mga ancient Greeks yung human capacity to reason. Na-emphasize nila yan. Bukod tangi. Bakit? Ay tingnan natin. Alright? At dahil nga na-highlight yan, nagkaroon ng philosophy. So, bottom line, sinasabi natin, yung Western civilization, all right, very, very familiar sa inyo yan, yung Western civilization that is uniquely useful, bakit? Eh, we'll talk about that later. Ang foundation niyan, dalawang bagay. Anong foundation ng Western civilization? Yung institution ng democracy at institution ng philosophy. Yan. Yung mga apat na puntos na yan, yan ang ating pag-uusapan. So far, so good. All right. Dito. So, yung apat na punto, pag-uusapan natin yan. At uh, para maliwanag, ay uh, ilagay natin ang usapan dine sa mapa. Mapa ng Greece. Nasaan ba ang Greece? All right. Balik tayo sa usapan natin, ha? Oh. Punta tayo sa mapa ng Greece. Ayan. Oh. Naku, mahabang usapan to. Oh, kita nyo ba? Nasaan ang Greece? Edi, iyan. Alright, ito. Iyan ang Greece. Alright. Ulitin natin. 
Mula din eh, sa banda rin eh, sinakop pa itong bandang ito, tapos hanggang doon, yan ang Greece. Alright? Actually, kung hindi dito sa ismus na ito, yung leeg na yan, eh, archipelago na yung Greece eh. Kasi, pag tinignan yung mabuti, pag tinignan yung mabuti, napaka, uh, ano ba ang tawag dyan? Napakadaming mga isla. Alright? Tingnan yung mabuti, ang daming mga islands yan, no? Ang pinakamimportanting island ay ito. Yan. Ang pangalan ng island na yan, sulat natin, Crete. Alright, napaka-importante yun sa usapan natin. The island of Crete. Alright? Ah, bakit importante? Eh, mamaya ako may paliwanan. Alright? Now, noong unang panahon, ay anong nangyari? ay di merong isang civilization dito. Nakikita nyo ba itong ilog na ito? Alright? Ilog yan. In fact, may isa pang ilog dito. Hanggang dito yun eh. Itong ilog na ito, papunta rito, nagtatagpo yan somewhere. Itong ilog na ito, kilala nyo yan. Nagsisimula sa letter E. Anong ilog yan? Euphrates. Ito naman, nagsisimula na sa letter T. Anong ilog yan? Tigris. Dahil sa mga ilog na yan, magandang maganda ang natural resources dito. Dahil maganda ang natural resources, nagkaroon ng, ng ano, Persian civilization. Nagkaroon ng Persian civilization. Alright? Eh, hindi lamang dyan may sibilisasyon. Ito, kita nyo, ang haba-haba-haba naman ng ilog na ito. Alright? Eh, siyempre, alam nyo, ang pangalan ng ilog na yan, Nile. At, of course, dahil maganda yung natural resources, nagkaroon dyan ng, ng civilization. Eh, di alam nyo na yon anong civilization? Eh, di Egyptian. Alright? Egypt. Chan. Alright? Alam niyo na yan. Now, noong unang panahon, may isang ilog dito. Actually, pag tinignan niyo mabuti, itong era na ito, may mga ilog dito dati eh. Kita niyo itong part na ito. Alright? Itong part na ito, may ilog dyan dati eh. Alright? Meron din doon ay, hindi pala, sorry. Meron din doon sa mga ray, doon pa ganun. Now, itong part na ito, noong unang panahon, may civilization. Ang pangalan ng civilization, Carthage. Carthage. Alright. So, meron kang car... Ay, sorry. Meron kang Carthaginian civilization. Car... Sa... Ginyan, alright? Civilization. Yan. Okay. Now, you have one, you have two, and you have a third civilization here. And what's common to all of them? They had natural resources thanks to the rivers. But, uniquely, may isa pang civilization dito. Alright, yung civilization nandun sa island, ah, sa city of Konosos. The city was called Konosos, but the civilization was called Minoan civilization. Alright, Minoan, kasi bago na discovery ng 1960s, yung civilization, Merong Greek mythology na do sa mythology, merong isang Greek, yung Greek king, ang pangalan, si King Minos. Everybody was saying, oh, that's just a fiction, that's just a story, etc. Turns out, yung palang si King Minos, eh, mukhang totoo. 
yung basis ng kwento about King Minos, mukhang totoo, and this is where he lived in that city called Conosos. Alright? So, apat ang sibilisasyon noong ancient times. We're talking about the period of around 1500 years BC all the way to around 600 years BC. That's the period we're dealing with. All right? So far, so good. Everybody can uh, see what we're talking about. Now, may tanong. Papaano nangyari, as you can see, papaano nangyari na dito sa place na ito, na mukha namang walang natural resources, walang ilog, and in fact, pag nakita niya, puro mga batuhan lang yan. So, paano nangyari na nagkaroon ng sibilisasyon dyan? How did that happen? Big question. Alright, so we'll go into that. Pero meanwhile, bilangin lang natin, ano? meron tayong uh, one civilization here, meron tayong another civilization here, Meron tayo another civilization here and then another here, all four. And this is uniquely uh, interesting. Why? Because it had no natural resources and yet it was highly civilized. In fact, yung Konosos in many ways ay mas sophisticated ang civilization kaysa civilization, for example, ng Cartaginians. So, big question, no? Uh, we'll get back to that later, but meanwhile, uh, let's see what's going on. All right, meanwhile, uh, let me call your attention to something else. All right, keep that at the back of your mind. There were four civilizations in the ancient times, and this is now the other matter I want you to pay attention to. All right, check this out. There looks like a boundary of water between two lumps of land. This is land, this is land, this is land, this is land, 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 land. And then you have what? Another piece of land, this is land, 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 all right? And where's the boundary? This is the boundary. All right. Okay. Very good. Keep that in mind. We'll get back to that later. Now, baka nami-miss nyo na ako. Eh, di ito. All right. Ngayon. Along situation. Merong isa dating tectonic plate buong buo naghiwalay. Yung isang plate, European plate, tectonic plate. Yung isang plate, African plate. What happened? Biglang silang nag-collide. Nung nag-collide sila, yung uh, European tectonic plate umakyat. At yung African tectonic plate nagsubside. So, anong nangyari? Ay, excuse me. Anong nangyari? Well, even a better question, eh, sir, ano namang kinalaman? Ano nangyari? Sir, ano namang kinalaman ng usapan na yan sa logic? Eh, wala. Gusto ko lang magpwento. <laughs> Alright. So, what happened? Now, pay attention to this. Alright? Pay attention to this. See that? Yan ang mga itsura ng mga places sa Greece. Ancient times at sa Ito yung typical landscape sa Greece. Alright? 
Saan ang Greece? Oh, balik tayo dito ha. Saan ang Greece? Sabi nga natin, dito. Nandun siya sa European plate. Ano nangyari sa European plate? Umakyat. Ito yan. Yung dating underwater, <coughs> excuse me, for a long, long, long time, tectonic plate but underwater, all of a sudden, umakyat. Yan. Now, ang problema, kasi underwater dati, itong maraming places sa Greece, specifically sa Greece at saka Italy, itong maraming places na ito, na formerly underwater, ay coralline material. Coralline meaning to say calcium carbonate, and calcium carbonate under high pressure becomes marble. Kaya sila sikat sa mga Roman structures ng Italy at saka Greek structures ng Greece, puro mga marble columns. Kasi ang dami nilang calcium carbonate dahil coralline material sila millions and millions of years ago. Alright? E biglang umakyat. Nung umakyat, itong itsura. Alright? Nung umakyat, ito itsura. Makikita ninyo, walang beach. In fact, biglang lalim ang tubig dyan. Walang beach. And then you can see layers and layers and layers of coralline material. Now, calcium carbonate, coralline material, porous material. And even worse, not only por porous, uh, soluble in water. So every time it rains, Alright? Yung rain, nagre-react sa calcium carbonate and then sumasama sa tubig. Nagkakaroon ng malalaking holes. In fact, some of them become what we today call sinkholes. Meaning to say, itong landscape na ito, hindi nakaka-contain ng tubig. Alright? This landscape, alright, cannot contain water. That's the reason why this landscape looks like that. See, this landscape has no trees. All right? If you go to the Philippines, oh, mag-search tayo ng konti, ha? <coughs> Excuse me. Philippine forest. Tingnan nga natin. Images. Ano ba itsura ng mga forest sa Pilipinas? Alright, ito isang example ng forest sa Pilipinas. Oh. Alright. Can you see that? That's a Philippine forest. Uh, courtesy of Michael Angelo Francisco. Okay, thanks to him, we can see how a Philippine forest looks like. Now, what's the point? That's full of trees. You see, ang Pilipinas... Underneath our grounds, marami tayong clay, clay material. You know, clay, you cook it, you have pots, you have pottery. Pots that can contain water. But even if you don't cook, uh, cook uh, clay, it is impervious enough that water cannot pass through it. So pagka ang ilalim ng lupa, maraming clay, yung tubig nakokontain, therefore you have ground water. And you have groundwater, you have plant life. And you have plant life, when the plants die, you have topsoil. And when you have topsoil, then you have more plant life. And then you have more, more topsoil because the, the roots of the plants will dig into the soil to get all the minerals from under the soil. And then as the plants die, the minerals stay on top of the soil and that becomes what you call topsoil. Very productive full of life but you go to Greece this is what you get why you only get grasslands and just a handful of hardy types of trees why because they do not have water walang ground water kasi every time it rains the water goes all the way through the holes and ends up in the sea as you can see here they end up all over the sea. So, no forest. Now, what does that mean? 
we get back to Greece. What does that mean? All right. You see, most of Central Greece devoid of plant life the way we have plant life in the Philippines. All right. These areas, you cannot have husbandry because only hardy types of, of uh, only hardy types of animals like goats and sheep and goats and sheep. You cannot have pigs, you cannot have carabaos, you cannot have cows all over the place because, excuse me, <coughs> there's not much to eat over yonder. All right, ito ang itsura nila eh. Wala kang kakainin dyan, walang agricultural production, that's the point. There are no farms that you can put up. So, along the central parts of Greece, you have no human settlement, that's the point. So, saan na pupunta ang human settlement? See, every time, if you look at the, the, the way the different places in Greece are structured, all right? Manipis ang topsoil. When it rains, the topsoil goes with the rain, goes with the water flowing down as, as much as the, the, the water can, can take the soil with it. All right? So, nagkaka-erosion. Nagkakaroon ng erosion. Ano nangyari? Pag may erosion, this is what happens. Nagkakaroon kayo ng flood plains. Alright? Some flood plains here, some flood plains here, some flood plains doon. Ito, malaking flood plain yan. Dito may flood plain dito. Diyan may flood plain dyan. Parang in Leyte, for example, yung Tacloban. Tacloban City is a flat land. Why? Because it is a a uh, flood plain. And that's the reason why nung nagkayolanda, doon pumunta ang baha. Ang dami na matay. Alright? Now, the flood plains, you have topsoil co that collect throughout the centuries and then there you can have your uh, farmlands. And therefore, that's where you get your human settlements. So you have settlements here, settlements here, 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 and in different places where you have the flood plains. Way below the mountainous areas. All right? So far, so good. Modern life, pwede meron tayong dito na settlement. But that's only because we have technologies that we can use to bring water at up these places. But not in the ancient times. All right? So, what happens? You have all Greek-speaking communities, all Greek-speaking societies throughout the centuries developing. And guess what? As they develop, they develop their, their cultures differently with unique nuances. Parang sa Cordillera region, marami dyan Ilocano. In fact, lahat sila Ilocano. All of them speak Ilocano. But unfortunately, you have... One kind of culture, the Tengians, another kind of culture, the Kalingas, another type of culture, the Sagadas, another type of culture, uh, the Itnegs and the Ifugaos. And because they have unique cultures, when they come into contact, there is conflict. Walang contact, makakasi, there are no roads that you could build across. All right? No way you can build roads, places like this. One, you have to climb up. And then two, there's no water there and you work without water. And three, there's no food over yonder. So, very difficult. And so, in the long run, nobody builds, sorry. In the long run, nobody builds roads. There are no roads connecting to the, connecting between connecting the different settlements with one another. There is no connection. And so what happens, because there is no connection, then they develop unique cultures, and then when they get into contact, you have war. In other words, you have here 
a city of peoples, or rather, a group of peoples who have one. All right, let me let me uh, give you two points. One point: they are martial in nature. You have martial societies. Why martial? Kasi mahilig sa martial arts. Mahilig sa gera. War. Parang mga, huwag na mga magalit, alright, mga taga-cordillera, magaling sa labanan. Alright, one characteristic of the Greeks, they are good soldiers. They are good martial artists. They are always prepared to go to war. Why? Eh, kasi nga, yan ang nangyari, thanks to their uh, geographical situation. Alright? But then there's another point. What's the second point? The second point is because they have no roads, they had to rely on the sea for travel. And therefore, they became very excellent navigators all right, sa dagat. All right. In other words, maritime ang kanilang culture. All right. Kultura ng mga mandaragat. Yan. Okay. So, anong kinalaman niyan sa logic? Eh, wala. Gusto ko lang magkwento. <laughs> okay. Balik tayo sa usapan natin. Remember? Meron tayong, excuse me, meron tayong sibilisasyon dito, Persian, ay sorry. Meron tayong sibilisasyon dyan, Persian, alright, one, may sibilisasyon tayo dito, Egyptian, two, may sibilisasyon tayo, Cartaginian, three, at may sibilisasyon tayo dyan, four, Minoan. Now, ancient peoples, believe that their lives are in the hands of the gods and the deities. So you can expect 100% ng lahat ng sibilisasyon sa buong mundo, sila ay ano, people who believe that their lives are in the hands of the gods and the deities. 100% yan. Eh, anong ibig sabihin? Ang kanilang mga rulers are either one, sons and daughters of the gods and the deities, or two, prophets of the gods and the deities. Then you have what we call priest kings. Like the emperor of China, supposed to be a god. Like the emperor of Egypt, supposed to be a god. Like the emperors of the Aztecs. Anywhere in the world, it's like that. So you have absolute rulers. And this for civilizations for a long time in all of Europe were no different. They were absolute rulers. All right? Ano nangyari? Itong mga absolute rulers na ito ay di masarap ang buhay. All right? Ang sarap naman ang buhay nila. Eh nagkataon, si remember I told you may civilization dito. Bakit? Kasi, yung civilization dyan, kahit walang natural resources, alright? This is the answer. You have traders coming from Carthage. You have traders coming from Egypt. You have traders coming from Persia. When there is inclement weather, they look for refuge. And probability-wise, statistically, their main refuge has always been Crete. Alright? Crete. So even without natural resources, Crete was a place to go to. Why? Because there you meet many traders. Just like Hong Kong. Alright? Just like Singapore. Alright? Hong Kong, Singapore. Alright? They have not much natural resources, but that's the, they're the places to go to by because good business. There are so many businessmen, there are so many traders, many goods you can buy and ship because 
there's plenty of supply. So very unique place, a place for businessmen. They are not so known for soldiering. They are more known for business. The empire here known for soldiering. The empire here known for soldiering. The empire here known for soldiering. But here, they are not known for soldiering just like Hong Kong. They are not known for soldiering just like Singapore. They are known for doing business. All right? Very good. Now, unfortunately for Colossus and the Minoan civilization, down here, all right, somewhere here, there used to be a volcano. All right, it was an island volcano. And it exploded. All right, and it exploded. The explosion was so vast. The, the volcanic ash went over and over and over. And in fact, the volcanic ash reached all the way to the United Kingdom today, or what is, is uh, the British Isles. Guess what? Historical records tell us that the volcan, by the way, you remember the earth is revolving in this direction. Right? So you have the explosion, the volcanic ash goes here reaches the British Isles. The volcanic ash lingered for several days and therefore no sunlight all over the, the British Isles recorded in history. Guess what? No sunlight, therefore their vegetable patches died. All right? Their vegetable patches died, recorded in history. Even worse, the volcanic ash, all right, went all the way to China, the other side of the world. And for several days, no, not several, sorry, let me correct myself. For a couple of days, the, the blue skies of China turned yellow. Yellow from volcanic ash. Can you imagine that? So, what's the point? All of a sudden, the civilization here is gone. In just one day, the civilization is gone. All right? Remember, these are civilizations run by priest kings. These are civilizations run by priest kings. And they were absolute rulers. In the case, in the case of uh, Crete, Crete was ruling this entire region politically, economically, and religiously, culturally. What Crete says, everybody in this region believes. Now, all of a sudden, their center of civilization, their center of political, religious, and cultural influence and economic, gone. No more. In just one day. In fact, the king of Colossus, together with his assistant, and a boy being sacrificed in a chapel, have been preserved for time immemorial for everybody to see by volcanic ash. When they dug up the city of Knossos, the three of them were found in the chapel. On a single day, gone. All right, now. Me. Na miss niya. Imagine the Vatican City. All right? And then imagine there is earthquake and then it opens up. Underneath the Vatican City, the ground opens up and all of the Vatican City goes into it and then it closes. That's almost like what happened to Colossus. All right? In the case of the Vatican City, if that, if that happens, then all of a sudden, there's no Catholicism. All right? And that actually, that actually happened to, excuse me, 
That actually happened to Greece. So what has been the result? With their center of political influence and their center of religious influence gone, they came to develop what we today call civil or civic civil or civic civic All right. civil or civic society civic religion all right civil religion in other words for example, uh, imagine some culture here, some society here, another here, another here, another here, another here, another here. What has happened was they develop their own interpretations of their own religion, independent of one another. So you go from one community to another, you may be talking about the same gods, the same narratives, the same uh, behavior of gods, but you have different interpretations of what all of these would mean. So it was a very different world after the volcanic eruption. Before the volcanic eruption, everybody here believed the same thing. Sorry, before before, let me repeat, before the volcanic eruption, everybody here believed the same thing. After the volcanic eruption, you go from one place to another, they had different ways of interpreting their own religion, given the same gods and the same narratives. Why? Because they interpreted their religion according to their own situation, according to their own community experience. That's the reason why we have the expression civil religion. Another way of putting it, religion became liberal. Religion became liberal. And apparently nowhere else in the world was such a place where you had liberal religion. It was only here, unique to the Greeks. All right? So unique to the Greeks. So what is the effect? Well, we'll go back to that later. As all of this have been happening, all right? As all of this have been happening, all right, sorry. As all of this have been happening, somewhere here, an emperor became so strong, he came to dominate all of this area. The entire Saudi Arabian Peninsula, what we today call the Saudi Arabian Peninsula, was dominated by a Persian emperor. Now let me warn everybody, because we do not have enough time to tell all the whole story. What is happening now is I'm telling you about three generations, all right, three generations of Persian emperors, all right, three. But I, I'm just simplifying the situation. Now what happens is this. You have here a very dominant emperor and the emperor gets to have so many kids, so many sons, over 200 sons, all competing with one another to become the next king once the father dies. Now, problem. All right, that means civil war. Now, nung nagkaroon ng gera dito, nag-away-away sila, nadamay ang Greece. Because remember, Greece was one 
Magaling saan? Sa gera. Alright? They're always prepared to go to war. Magaling na sundalo. Two, sila yan o, magaling na na maritime culture. Alright? Maritime culture. Magaling. In other words, magaling na navigators. And remember, itong sibilisasyon na ito, sibilisasyon na maraming ilong. In fact, two of the longest rivers in the world with literally thousands of tributaries. So, from the point of view ng naghahanap na sundalo, kasi pag kinukulang ng sundalo, kumukuha sila ng mercenaries. They get, it from, they get the mercenaries from here. Yung mga Greek mercenaries dinala sa gera. At in fact, maraming pagkakataon, yung mga Greek mercenaries ay nananalo kasi magaling nga sa gera, tapos magaling pang mag-navigate dun sa mga ilog. Alright? So, ano nangyari? Well, matagal yung gera. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, tatlong generations yung pinag-uusapan natin. But, inevitably, uh, an emperor was able to stabilize the situation so that he was able to establish the civilization so that uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the emperor was able to stabilize the situation so that uh, Again, he was able to extend this empire all the way to Egypt. Pero meron siyang big question mark here. Kasi he came to realize that so long as the Greeks are around under no control of his, he is in danger. Kasi anyone from his friends or his sons or his relatives who get enough mercenaries from Greece, they can overpower him. And so, the emperor has decided to invade Greece. Guess what? The invasion at its height had 500,000 men. Ganong kalaking army. Ibang klase, you know? They literally had tens of thousands of ships invading Greece. Yan. Now remember, ang Greece ay ano, iba-ibang kultura na magkakaaway. Alright? They were uh, different groups, different societies at war with one another. Kaya nga mahusay ng mga mag right? So what has been the effect of the invasion by the Persians? Anong naging epekto? Alright? Before we go on, let me get back to business. You remember I told you, Crete was a place for businessmen. Alright? Crete was a place for traders coming from here, traders coming from here, traders coming from here. Alright? Thanks to the volcanic explosion, this was lost on a single day. Now, However, the businessmen, the traders, have still been around. The businessmen were still around. The traders were still around and they look for an alternative, an alternative to Crete. And they found the alternative here. All right, they found the alternative here. In a place where... You had a bay where ships can come in and be safe. All right? All right? The bay is what? The Bay of Athens. There you go. All of a sudden, Athens became, has become the apple of the eye of the traders. All right? So, Businessmen, they all go to not Konosos anymore. They all go to, they all go to what? Again, let me repeat. Businessmen, they all go to, they all go to 
Athens. There you go. Now, problem. Remember, topsoil manifest. Topsoil manifest. No agricultural production. So, if you had political power, you have you have two foundations. One is the economy, but there is not much economy to speak of. No topsoil, no agricultural production, not so much. Guess what? Another problem. So one problem, topsoil, a poor agriculture. Another problem, religion. Religion was civil in nature. Not was liberal, not centralized. And so if you were a local leader of Athens, all right, if you were a local leader of Athens, you had big problems. Why? Because traders are rich people, they have money. Not only that, traders have private armies. Because traders, by experience, know there are many, many pirates all over the Mediterranean. And so they never have just one ship, they have at least two or more ships with them. And they have with them a private army to boot. And so when they enter the regions of Athens, the result is they come to dominate the leaders. There is more often than not a problem because the local leadership are weak compared to the traders from uh, Persia, traders from uh, Egypt, and traders from uh, Carthage. And so what happens, there is instability, but uh, they had to live with it, all right? With instability, because that's the only, play, the only alternative you can get when, when you need refuge, all right? Now, what happens? Well, inevitably, Athens came to develop, like Hong Kong or Singapore, a good place for traders, good place for businessmen. Now, Many of the traders inevitably came to settle in Athens. And as they settled in Athens, just like that, the Chinese booted out of China during the Boxer Rebellion, they end up in the Philippines and they stay put in Binondo. And when they stay put in Binondo, some of their kids are born there in Binondo. Similarly, the sons and daughters of the oligarch rich families from Persia, Egypt, and Carthage, they get to settle here and their kids are born in Greece. And as the kids grow up, they think of themselves as on one hand, oligarch families from elsewhere, mga Tisoy, and on the other hand, they think of themselves as Greeks. All right? And thinking of themselves as Greeks, Parang mga Chino, ang tawag nila sa sarili nila, mga Chinoy. Ang sabi nila, alright, eh kailangan naman magmalasakit tayo. Kailangan magmalasakit tayo para sa Athens. One of those na nagmalasakit na anak ng mga oligarch families, mga Tisoy, ang pangalan si Solon. Si Solon Matalino. Si Solon, mabait. Si Solon, honest person, kilala ng lahat. And so, sabi ni Solon, kailangan tulungan natin ng gobyerno, tumutulong siya lagi. At pag tumutulong siya sa lagi, napansin niya, mahirap pala. <laughs> Parang nakalbo na ako, alright, tumanda na akong binata, katutulong sa bayan, ay kahirap pala, tapos sisisihin pa ako. Alright? So, sabi ni Solon, ang hirap tumulong sa bayan. So, what he did was this. Dahil sila naman, siya naman ay matalino at magaling magsalita, kinausap niya ang mga pamilya. Alright? Baka namimiss nyo na ako, ay edi eto uli ako, ha? Yeah. So, yung tisoy, si Solon, imagine nyo parang si, si uh, Sobel de Ayala. Yung tisoy, sabi niya, tulong ako sa bayan. Ay, ang kahirap pala. Ako pa ang sisisihin. 
Pagkatapos, ang ginawa niya, kinausap niya yung mga oligarch families. O, ikaw pamilya ka, ikaw pamilya ka, ikaw pamilya ka, ikaw pamilya. Usap nga tayo. Kasi, pag may stability, ay good for business. Pagka may instability, bad for business. So, with stability, pag inayos natin ang gobyerno, everybody benefits. So, kinausap niya. Sabi niya, mag-develop tayo ng system. At ang na-develop nilang system, ganito. Ito na-develop nilang system. Sila ay magbubunutan. In a meeting held regularly, sila ay magbubunutan yung mga pamilyang pamilyang uh, very influential, mga oligarch families, magbubunutan. At pagka nagbubunutan, inevitably, they get to decide who will help the government for one year. And so everybody's happy kasi may stability. Ayan. At dahil may stability, ay di gumanda ang economy. Gumanda ang negosyo. Parang ang negosyo ng Hong Kong bago nagkagulo nung pinipilit ng Politburo ng China. Okay? Pinakailaman pa ng China, eh, kawawa na naman. So what happened? Ang ganda ng negosyo, all of a sudden, may mga pamilya, gusto nila sila lagi ang mag-monopolize nung pagpapatakbo ng gobyerno. Yung isang pamilya, gusto niya ang kanyang anak ang mayor, ang vice mayor ay anak din niya, ang councilor ay anak din niya, ang congressman ay anak din niya, ang president ay siya, ay di, ang kapal ng muka. Ang ginawa, pag nagbubunutan, sila-sila lang. Ang iimbitahan lang na pamilya, pag magbubunutan, ay kamag-anak lamang o kabarkada. Kawalang niya. Okay? Balik tayo sa usapan. Eh ano nangyari? Yung panahon ni Solon, okay na sana eh. Eh, dumating yung sumunod na generation, generation ni Cleisthenes. Cleisthenes. Itong generation ni Cleisthenes, mabanggit ko sa inyo, kasi gumanda ang negosyo, di ba? Nung gumanda ang negosyo, yung dating ugali ng Greeks, anong dating ugali ng Greeks? Makipag-gera. Sa Athens, bukod tang ay iba ugali ng mga Greeks. Sa Athens, bukod tang ay iba ang ugali ng mga Greeks. Ano ugali nila? Ang ugali nila, ang magaling na tao, magaling na negosyante. Kasi ang naging model of behavior nila, yung mga negosyante. Everywhere in Greece, ang model nila, yung magaling na sundalo. In Athens, ang model nila, yung magaling na negosyante. At ang mga negosyante, nag-o-organize. Meron silang mga cooperative. Ang tawag doon sa kanilang mga cooperative ay mga demis. Ang tawag doon sa mga tao ng mga demis ay mga demos. Halimbawa, meron kang demis ng uh, mga magaling gumawa ng pottery. Meron kang mga demis na magaling gumawa ng wine. Meron kang mga demes na magaling gumawa ng armor. May mga demes magaling gumawa ng barko. May mga demes magaling gumawa ng ropes. Yan. At ang Athens, ang dami naming mga demes, mga around 500 of them. 500 plus communities in Athens of business cooperatives. Ngayon, noong may madaya na pamilya, nagkaroon ng monopoly. Yung monopoly, dinadaya nila ang mga presyo. Alright? Noong monopoly, madaya. Well, paigsiin na lang natin, ano? Monopoly. Alright, anyway. Ang nangyari, sabi ni Claystonius, po tayo na, Ay, pardon the expression. Nagkamali. <laughs> Ay, pasensya na kayo, batang ganyo. Pag minsan talaga, mga batang ganyo, bastos eh. Alright, si Claystenes, sabi niya, alright, what's his name? Claystenes. Okay, I forgot the letter S, Claystenes. Sabi ni Claystenes, 
at daya naman ito. So ang ginawa niya, yung mga 500 or so na mga maliliit na communities, kinausap niya. And sila ay nag-people power. Oh, literally. Ang original na people power, people power ni Claystenes. Sila nag-people power. Sinabi nila, eh ganyan pala kayo madadaya. Eh ang gagawin namin, hindi na kami magpo-produce ng rope, hindi na kami gagawa ng barko, hindi na kami magpo-produce ng pottery, bahala kayo sa buhay nyo, magnikoso kayo ng hangin. Eh di, cut the story short, nanalo yung people power. Nagkapitulate yung mga mayayaman at pinag-isahan nila na tanggalin sa power yung nagmomonopolize. Lalong gumanda ang negosyo. But the best of all, naka-invento sila ng sistema, ang tawag natin, out of the name, Demes, Demos, ang tawag na na democracy. Yung 500 or so communities, may representative. Yung representative pinagsama-sama sa isang senate, and there you go, ang tawag democracy. Now, nung nauso ang democracy, nauso ang debate. Nung nauso ang debate, pati presyo, ng mga goods pinagdidibatihan. Ang nangyari, naging competitive lalong economy kasi pagka pinagdidibatihan ang presyo, ay di bumababa ang presyo. You have the lowest price with the best quality. Parang pumunta kayo sa, sa BGC, ay eh, wala kang magagawa. Kung anong presyo, ay di yun bibilhin mo. Pero pumunta ka sa 168, pag sinabi sa yung 1,000 pesos yung halaga ng pantalon, tawaran mo mamaya, mabibili mo na lang 500. Naging competitive ang pricing, gumandang economy. Nung nauso ang pagdidiba-debate, lalo na sa Senado, na-highlight ang reasoning. Yan. Na-highlight ang reasoning. Pero yan, nangyayari lamang doon sa Athens. Kaso, nung nagkagera, ano nangyari? Noong nagkagera, yung mga Greeks na pilitang magsama-sama, nagbuo sila ng kataas-taas ang kagalang-galang ang katipunan ng mga Greeks. At yung 500,000 men na kalaban nila, nagbuo sila ng military composed of 25,000. Maliit lang, 25. Ang kalaban nila, 500,000. Ngayon, may problema kasi 25,000 men, malaking pera ang gastos. Sipin mo na lang, magpamerienda ka, tapos breakfast, lunch, and dinner ng 25,000 men para magbikti ka na lang, di ba? Now, ang punto is, tinanong nila, saan ilalagay ang pera? Saan ilalagay ang budget? And saan ilalagay ang armed forces? Kasi, 25 men, pag inilagay mo sa kamay halimbawa ng mga Spartans at sinamahan mo pa ng sangkatutak na pera, ang argument was, aba, ay di ang problema natin na hindi Persians, ang magiging problema natin yung mga Spartans. Bakit? Eh mga walang hiyayan, ang trabaho ng mga Spartan, pupunta sa isang kingdom, tatalunin ng gera, tapos gagawing slaves yung lahat ng tao. Tapos pagka namatay na yung slaves working the farms, hahanap sila ng bagong makokonker. Yan ang trabaho ng Sparta. At yan din ang trabaho ng Boitia. At yan din ang trabaho ng halos lahat sa buong Greece. Yan ang ugali nilang mga sundalo. Magkonker at mag-ani. Mag-harvest ng slaves. Malaking problema. Pag doon mo ibinigay ang iyong forces, sinamahan mo pa ng kwarta, tagilid ka. Hindi mo na magiging problema ang Persians. Ang magiging problema mo, yung mga kababayan mo. So, sa dinami-dami-dami-dami ng usapan, inevitably, na-decide nila na sa Athens ilalagay ang kanilang armed forces. Sa Athens, dyan, nandyan ang armed forces. Dyan, nandyan ang pera. E kaso, umabot ng 70 years ang gera. 70 plus. O ay di lahat ng pera ay napunta dito. Hindi pa yon kasi lahat ng tao pumupunta dyan. Lahat ng mga ideas ay napunta doon. 
Now, dahil merong democracy, merong reasoning, may debate. Yung dating magkakalo, magkakagalit ng mga kings naging magkakabate. Yung dating, kasi hindi na nagpapatayan, kasi debate na lang. At yung dating mga magkakagalit na generals naging magkakaibigan. Kung mag-aaway mo sila, debate na lang. Patas, mamaya, inuman na uli. Even better, when you use reasoning and when you have debate, you get to see the best of the ideas and the worst of the ideas. So that if you're constructing a ship, then you see how to build the best kind of ships. Kasi you see the faults of the old ships and you have the good points of the new ships and then by the time you know it, you have the best ship the world has ever produced. And yun ang nangyari. Yung military equipment ng Greece, yung military strategies and tactics became the best in the world. Cut the story short, they won against the 500,000 men. Walang binatbat ang mga Persians. At nung sila ay nanalo, nauso sa buong region na ito, nadamay pa itong region na ito, Nadamay pa yung region na yan all the way hanggang dito. All the way hanggang dito sa Egypt. At anong nangyari, excuse me, nauso ang demokrasi. Nauso ang liberalism. Nauso ang reasoning. At dahil gumanda nga economy, kasi pag nagdidebate kayo sa mga presyo, you get the Lowest price for the best quality of the goods. Everybody was happy here. All right. Sikat na sikat ang Athens without declaring itself nagkaroon ng Athenian Empire. Without declaring itself as an empire, nagkaroon ng Athenian Empire. All right. This became the Athenian Empire. At gumandang influence ng democracy kumalat at Nauso ang paggamit ng reasoning. Guess what? The Greeks, thanks to what has happened, sila ang naka-invento sila ng activity, tinawag nila biology. They gave it a name, biology. Nakaisip din na activity, ang tawag nila physics, they gave it a name, physics. Nakaisip na na activity, they gave it a name, logic. Ngayon, pinaka-aralan ninyo. All right? Nag-invento sila ng system, ang tawag nila geometry ngayon, required by law. Pag-aaralan nyo exactly the same geometry na inimbento ng mga Greeks thousands of years ago. The Greeks were so good, they knew the world was round. And they were able to measure the circumference of the world. Exacto! Sabi nila, ang circumference ng mundo, 40,000 plus kilometers. Aba, ay walang satellite survey. Walang Walang uh, intercontinental travel and they were able to do that. Ibang klase ang mga Greeks. At magmula noon, eto na, summarize natin, ang legacy ng mga Greeks ay ito. Sinabi nila, men, pwede palang mag-predict ng future like the sun tomorrow rising from the east using only reasoning. Hinanap nila ang iba pang paraan to be able to predict the future using reasoning at yun na nga, na-invento nila ang biology, ang physics, ang logic, na-invento nila ang geometry, that's what we today call philosophy. And sabi nila, eto, conclusion, men can foresee the future, men can have control over their destinies, independent of the gods and the deities, dependent on their, their capacity to reason. Ulitin ko. Men can have control over their destinies. Why? Because they can predict the future. Men can have control over their destinies independent of the gods and the deities, dependent only on their capacity to reason. Point number one, they can predict the future. We already know. Point number two, independent of the gods and the deities. They were liberal. If you said independent of the gods and the deities in China, you die. In China, 400 men or so have said the same thing. 1,000 years before, 
And these men were saying, men can have control over their destinies independent of the gods and the deities. Sabi ng emperor, puta, ena. You are insulting the gods. Independent of the gods and the deities, that's an insult. You know what the emperor did? He had all of them buried alive in public. But you see, you were in Greece. Sa Greece may democracy. So, they were allowed to believe. So, sabi nila, men can have control over their destinies independent of the gods and the deities and dependent on their capacity to reason. That is what makes Western civilization unique. Doon sa India, doon sa China, they were saying the same thing only as individuals. But in Greece, they were saying that as a people, as a civilization, that's different. And so this is what happened. All of this area became an area where men came to believe that men can have control over their destinies independent of the gods and the deities dependent on their capacity to reason. And that's what we call, today call the Western civilization. With that tenet, with that uh, principle, and so we still will live with that. Very useful principle. We still think that way. All right? There you go. Diyan nagsimula ang philosophy. Ituloy natin ang usapan next meeting. Uh, naubusan na tayo ng oras. Uh, pasensya na. Hindi na natin napuntahan yung mga comment nyo. But pupuntahan ko mamaya after this class. Uh, I will balikan nyo. Ah. I will uh, comment on your comments. I will answer Everybody is free to comment. I may be wrong in some ways. You can criticize me, pero gusto natin malagrit. In other words, you can say what you want. May debate tayo. We just rely on reasoning. Alright? Magandang umaga po. Sana ay may natutunan kayo. Balang araw. Sana kayo naman ang magkukwento sa Pilipinas as ambassadors of maayos na pangangatwiran. Magandang umaga po. Ingat lagi ha.